Oh, hello, uh, uh, YouTube and Facebook ham radio chums. This is Steve, uh, G3ZPS, with another classic ham radio refurbishment. In fact, I've had a couple in uh, the last two weeks, but this is uh, the most uh, interesting. Uh, it's a Fox Tango 101 Echo, <clears throat> which is um, the last of the... Uh, first generation of FT 101s that ran from about 1970 to uh, 1976 uh, quite an innovation in 1970 I've also got the pre the radio that came out before this the FT DX 100 which was one of the first hybrid radios mainly transistors except for the PA and the driver and the FT-101 is an iconic radio, hundreds of thousands of them made and sold, used around the world in the 70s. So this is the E version, uh, which had most of the bugs from the earlier versions uh, ironed out. Uh, it still uses real components, so it's pretty easy to repair. And plug-in boards, which means, uh, again, it uh, can take out a board, replace it with another board. You can put an extender card in and work on it. Uh, but anyway, um, it's one week ago I bought this radio from when this video was made and I bought it at a hi-fi jumble sale. A bit weird, a bit bizarre, uh, in uh, Tunbridge in Kent in the UK. It's a bit like a ham radio rally, except it's got hi-fi valve, hi-fi transistor, hi-fi audio equipment, all sorts of stuff, but quite a few components and bits and bobs. And because there's electronic components and stuff, radio hams turn up. Uh, this was on sale when I arrived um, from a um, from a seller who was mainly selling audio stuff. And I seem to remember he said it's from his late friend. He didn't know much about it. And the thing that appealed to me is the front panel is very, very clean, almost unmarked, in fact. If it had been really dented, I wouldn't have bothered. There were others, earlier FT-101s at the same event, but they were they were very scruffy. This one wasn't. Anyway, I did the uh, I, I, did, I quickly did the deal, knocked him down a bit, uh, not too much, and I got it for v I think very very cheaply indeed. Uh, and then I discovered it didn't have a mains lead. Uh, luckily, I've got the radio that came out just before this in the 60s, and the mains lead 12 pin mains lead is identical. So. Uh, we were able to get this going. I turned it on uh, exactly one week ago and it was completely silent. Not a peep. Uh, so uh, I plugged an external speaker in uh, and it made some noise. In fact, it made the most appalling noise. You can imagine that distorted hum. You could hear signals in there, but it sounded awful. Uh, when I unplugged the external speaker, the internal speaker didn't work again, so I gave up for a day, and uh, the next day I took the radio apart. Uh, and as I took it apart, some, a, a pin fell out of the radio, like a panel pin used in woodwork. It's about a one inch long pin. And I thought, what the hell is this on this bench desk here? Uh, and then another one fell out. So I thought, oh my god. So I opened the lid of the radio, and I pulled out the audio board. I knew where the audio board was. I checked it in the manual. I pulled out the audio board first. And the audio board looked pretty good. But lo and behold, jammed in the quite big edge connectors in these radios, jammed in the edge connector was a pin lengthways. Obviously shorting out a few contacts. How the radio didn't go bang, I don't know. Shorted out the 13.6 volt line, but it didn't go bang so i fished the pin out cleaned the radio up put the uh, the ball back in <clears throat> and um we had signals um uh, and the radio appeared to start to come to life not very well aligned so they weren't as strong as i would have liked but the radio came to life um i quickly located that the headphone socket on the back of the radio uh little speaker socket rather on the back of the radio for external speaker um, had just worn away a little bit and had lost connection with the internal speaker. So our man who fixed it, or tried to fix it, rather didn't fix it, he must have gone off and then he opened the radio up, took out the audio board and there must have been a comedy moment when he knocked a load of pins into the radio. It never worked again so he must have given up. Um, 
the radio worked for a couple of days and then it died again uh, but it only died on receive and I quickly worked out that one transistor in the IF strip had for some reason just died that day it just died of old age uh, but I took I took out what I thought was the offending transistor put it on my tester and it said it was no component was detected so I grafted in another RF transistor and the radio came back uh, the AGC was a little bit snappy so I've just added another capacitor on the AGC to slow it down a little bit had loads of contacts but the audio was quite poor on receive humming quite a bit so I took the audio board out again and I found some tinsel in there or something like that uh, for good measure I changed all the decoupling caps uh, electrolytics they're only 16 volt rating which is quite near the 14 volts so uh, and hum went away and the audio's improved so here it is uh, wrong knob <laughs> A very lively receiver on 40. So uh, there it is, um, I'm not sure the noise blanker works, I've had the circuit out, I've had the blanker out a couple of times. Uh, the switch definitely works on the, to the board but it's very hard to test the ball because it's, it's vertical and you can't get to any pins and I haven't got an extender. So I might borrow another blanker board and, um, and try and uh, check whether the blanker is in fact working. Maybe I haven't got the right noise for it. Uh, I've repainted the outer case uh, in a very close match, which is those of you that watch a lot of my videos will know that I always do to improve the look of a radio. New screws. Uh, I've got about 100 watts out, uh, over 100 watts out on uh, 80, 40 and uh, 20. Uh, the other amusing thing is that the radio was obviously owned by a CB or a free bander. All these extra, all these 10 meter frequencies here had very strange crystals in which when you calculated it would have taken the radio all over the HF spectrum not on hand bands so I think he was a free bander um, you know, somebody who operates anywhere <laughs> on any part of the HF spectrum in fact one of the crystals I calculated was 30 to 30.5 megs so just off the top of 10 meters and I got another box of crystals with it that came with it uh, and they're all weird frequencies as well so um, um, that might explain his lack of technical expertise in, in bringing this radio back but um, I brought it back it looks nearly new works really well bit of alignment to do on the the one 10 meter crystal that I've got I think he might have twiddled it so uh, I've got to do that and a uh, top band uh, I think is out of alignment as well and for some reason these LEDs don't work and I haven't quite worked out why I've got to t take it out apart again but there we go the FT101E and you're in business Mike yeah so uh, what do you think of the radio what do you think so there we go another restoration from G3's FPS watch again got more to more to show you <laughs> 